Compaq complies with the Americans with Disabilities Act. In an effort to accommodate disabilities, you may obtain a transcript of this tape from Compaq Training. Compaq understands the critical importance of system management in today's rapidly changing business environments. As computer systems continue to evolve in both size and complexity, Compaq racks and rack mountable products are designed to centralize equipment, increase efficiency and accessibility, while providing plenty of expansion capability in the future. This training will demonstrate step-by-step -step installation procedures for Compaq racks and rack mountable products. The first section will introduce the Compaq Rack 4000 series and review the Compaq Rack 7000 series. Both series are designed to fit all 19-inch industry standard Compaq Rack mountable products. Environment and space requirements including power, temperature and airflow will be covered to ensure optimum performance and minimum maintenance of your rack cabinet system. To help plan your rack configuration more efficiently, Compaq provides a software utility called Rack Builder, included with this manual. Refer to this software as an additional guide prior to component installation. Once the site has been determined and the appropriate configuration of components has been prepared, all the tools for installation will be presented. With two installers at the rack location site, demonstration on leveling and stabilizing procedures and coupling to create a suite of racks will also be presented. The remainder of the training will focus on component installation demonstrating the various methods including heavier components using fixed rails, high capacity components using heavy duty slide rails, the standard and rear serviceability units, and high density products using a light duty fixed rail. In addition, sections on cable management and system enhancements will also be provided. Compaq offers two series of space efficient racks to meet every system need. For those requiring a more economical answer to hardware storage, Compaq introduces the Rack 4136-36U. Its sidewall panels are installed and removed by quarter-turn key locks located on the outside. Coupling on the Rack 4000 series is done with four coupling clamps, which quickly and easily join multiple Rack 4136 units. All locks on the front and back doors and sidewall panels use the same key. To open the front and back doors, press on the release handle button to pop the handle up and turn the handle right toward the inside to open the rack. The Rack 7000 series has provided dependable service for many years. Sidewall panels for the Rack 7142-42U can be ordered separately as an option kit. Sidewall panels for the Rack 7122-22U are standard. The U refers to a unit of measurement equaling 1.75 inches. Components are also measured by U's to determine how many can fit into a rack. There's no need for manually calculating these because the Rack Builder software takes care of this for you. Space and environment are important considerations for rack placement. The footprint required is 24 inches wide by 34 inches deep. Clearance in front of the racks should be at least 25 inches to allow the door to open all the way and for adequate airflow. Clearance in the back of the racks should be at least 30 inches to allow access to components for service and airflow. Allow at least 15 inches of clearance around the sides for power supply service. Power needs to be balanced between available AC supply branch circuits. The overall AC current load must not exceed 80% of the branch circuit AC current rating. If using power strips, the load should not exceed 80% of the power strip's marked electrical current rating. For proper operation and safety, all powered rack-mounted equipment should be properly grounded in accordance with NFPA 70-1993, Article 50. All power distribution devices, branch wiring and receptacles must be listed grounding type devices. When using power strips, ensure that ground integrity is maintained for each connection made by plugging all components into a reliable grounded outlet. For safe and reliable operation of your equipment, locate the server in a well-ventilated, climate-controlled room. The maximum recommended ambient operating temperature, or TMRA, for most compact products is 35 degrees Celsius, or 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Room temperature should not deviate from these recommendations. 
It's important to check the TMRA for each component before installation, as temperatures inside the rack will always be higher than the ambient room temperature. Most rack-mountable compact servers draw cool air in through the front and exhaust warm air out the rear. Both the front and rear doors of the rack must be adequately ventilated to allow ambient room air to enter and warm air to escape. Always refer to your local electrical and mechanical codes. Here's a demonstration of adding components using Rack Builder. Rack Builder can assist you with the best configuration of your unique set of hardware requirements. This software generates a report listing all compact parts and part numbers and the order that your components should be installed. Generate this report prior to the installation of your components as a guide to help plan your rack configuration more efficiently. Smart Start. The intelligent CD-based software utility dramatically simplifies configuration of server hardware and software setup. We highly recommend Smart Start to simplify your configuration needs. The tools required for rack and component installation include a flat blade screwdriver. Phillips screwdrivers numbers 1, 2, and 3. Torx screwdrivers T10 and T15. A box or adjustable wrench and cage nut fitting tool provided with the rack mounting hardware. Use battery powered screwdrivers for comfort and efficiency during the installation. With the site location determined and your racks and components delivered to the room, you can begin installation. Roll the rack to its permanent location. The hardware components included with your rack are a vented front and rear door, keys, a vented roof, mounting brackets, casters, and leveling feet. The mounting bracket hardware includes 100 M6 by 1.0-16L Phillips screws, 50 M6 by 1.0 cage nuts, and cage nut fitting tool. In addition to the standard hardware, a rack 7122 will include two sidewall panels, a rack stabilizing foot for the front base, and three pairs of mounting brackets. The rack 7142 will contain six pairs of mounting brackets and the rack 4136 contains five. For single rack installation, it's important that the rack be stabilized before component installation. The leveling feet, located beside each caster, unscrew and extend to the floor, compensating for uneven surfaces. After positioning the rack in its final location, Extend the leveling feet until the weight of the rack is fully on the feet and off the casters. For a standalone rack, stabilizing feet are required for additional support. Rack 7142 and 4136 units require one kit each and need to be ordered separately. Each kit contains three stabilizing feet. Align the stabilizing feet with the holes on the bottom of each corner of the rack. Attach one to the front and one to each side of the rack. One stabilizing foot is included with the rack 7122. Attach it to the front base of the rack. To provide easy access to the racks for installation, sidewall panels and doors need to be removed. First, remove the front and rear doors from the racks. The doors are secured by handles with key locks. For rack 7000 series, slide the handle release cover up. Press the handle release button and the handle will pop out as it unlatches. Turn the handle to the left, toward the inside, to open the door. Press the top hinge release and pull the top door pin loose. Press the bottom hinge release and pull the door away from the rack. Store the door in an upright position to protect the front panel from damage. For the rack 4136, pull down on the top hinge release and pull the top of the door away from the frame. Lift the door up and away from the rack. Multiple racks need to be joined or coupled to save space and offer stability. Once coupled, stabilizing feet are not required. Coupling kits for the rack 7142 provide insulated dust strips to cover top and bottom spaces between the racks and the cosmetic face plates that hide the gaps. These kits are ordered separately and allow you to join rack 7142 units into a suite using the four angle brackets provided with the kit. Attach one of the four angle brackets to the side of the top, the bottom, front, 
and back frame of one rack. Each of these brackets need four 1224 by one half self-tapping Phillips panhead screws, which are included with the kit. Once the screws are in place, leave them loose for further adjustments. Before moving the next rack in place, prepare the dust strips by pressing the foam into the channel. To install the dust strip to the top and bottom of the rack, move the next rack into place, making any necessary adjustments in alignment. Insert the four Phillips screws into the angle brackets to fasten the rack into place. Slide the top dust strip between the racks to rest on the top angle brackets. Once the two racks are aligned, tighten all screws on both racks. Next, attach the dust strip to the top angle brackets by inserting two 632 by 3 8 self-tapping Phillips panhead screws into the groove of the dust strip. Attach the bottom dust strip by sliding into place and holding until the two remaining panhead screws can be attached. Align the cosmetic face plates with the front of the two adjoining racks. Attach the plate with four M6 by 1.0-10L Phillips panhead screws with flat and lock washers. Do the same for the rest of the rack. Coupling kits are also available for the rack 4136 and use these new coupling clamps. Before attaching the coupling clamps, the rack should be empty and the sidewall panels and front and back doors should be removed. Position the rack units to be connected next to each other. Insert one coupling clamp into the mounting holes of each rack unit. Attach and tighten the wing nut. Place two coupling clamps on the joining edges at the front and at the back of the racks. Place the clamps so that they are spaced near the top and bottom of the racks. Before beginning installation, use the configuration prepared with the Rack Builder software as your guide. Make sure there is at least 30 inches between the wall and the rack for adequate access during installation. All compact components come with hardware mounting kits, specific installation templates unique to each unit, and a planning and installation guide, which should be read along with this training before component installation. Heavier components, such as UPS devices, DLT libraries, and high-capacity compact servers, should be loaded first on the bottom of the rack. These components weigh as much as 145 pounds and need at least two installers to load them onto the rack. If your system contains several of these items, they may need to be placed in separate racks because of their excessive weight. First, we'll install an uninterruptible power supply, or UPS, which is a fixed rail component. New UPS models have card options to expand your system needs. The multi-server card facilitates direct communication with up to three servers through individual serial communication ports, preventing the need to purchase additional UPSs to support each server. The scalable UPS card enables multiple UPSs to work together as one virtual UPS providing scalability and field upgradability. Before installing the multi-server card, compact power management software must first be installed. Remove the access panel on the back and install the multi-server card, fastening the screws. Connect the cables from the port marked UPS on the multi-server card to the serial port of the UPS. Connect a serial port on the server to a port connector on the UPS using the supplied cable. Repeat this step for each server. Follow the same procedures for installing the scalable UPS card. To install all compact rack mountable UPSs and all fixed rail units, use the front side of the template to mark locations for cage nuts and mounting screws. Use the rear side of the template and do the same. Use the fitting tool to insert three cage nuts on the back of each side of the rack. On the front, insert a cage nut on each side where indicated by the template. 
loosen the adjusting screws in the middle of the fixed rail. Adjust the rail to fit in the front and rear of the rack. The tabs on the front align on the rail and hold it to the rack frame. Align the fixed rail's rear flange with the corresponding cage nuts in the rear rack frame. Insert three screws to secure it. Align the front and use one Phillips pen head screw on the top hole to fasten. Now tighten the adjustment screws in the middle of the fixed rail. With at least two installers, load the compact UPS in the rack. Fasten the UPS faceplate to the rack. The installation of a DLT library or high-capacity ProLiant server requires heavy-duty slide rails and handles. A slide rail is a two-piece unit, the bracket rail and the component. Attach the entire slide rail to the mounting bracket by sliding the rail forward and aligning the back screw hole and fasten with a screw. Slide the rail forward to align the front hole and fasten the second screw near the middle and the third screw at the front. Now slide the rail back a couple of inches to fasten the fourth screw. Turn the mounting bracket over to verify all four screws are installed. To install a high capacity ProLiant server, use the template that comes with the server and note the front and back sides. Using the front side, mark the screw holes and the position of the cage nuts that hold the thumb screws to the component's faceplate. Insert the cage nuts with the fitting tool. Using the back of the template, mark the screw holes. Mount the assembled bracket to the rack using the cage nuts in the rear and the threaded bracket connector at the front. Extend the rails out. With two installers, lift the server onto the slide rails and align it so that the front hole on the slide rail matches the hole on the side of the server. Attach the slide rail to the server and remove the handles. Replace the top and side access panels. Press the release lever, slide the server the rest of the way in, and attach the two thumb screws. We'll now demonstrate standard slide rail installation procedures. The standard slide mounted components include most compact servers and professional workstations, ProLiant storage systems, and keyboards. Although we'll demonstrate installation of a professional workstation, all standard slide rail components use the same methods as will be shown. Retrieve two of the mounting brackets from the rack hardware materials. These components come equipped with either 24 inch or 22 inch slide rails. A slide rail is a two piece unit, the bracket rail and the component rail. On a flat surface, slide the component rail out until it stops. Hold down the spring of the component rail and slide it completely off. Attach the bracket rail to the mounting bracket by aligning the front screw hole and fasten with two screws. Now move the inner slide to gain access to the first of the other two screw holes and fasten. Move it back to gain access to the second and fasten.
At completion, you should have five screws installed. Attach the component rail to the workstation Load the workstation with at least two installers into the rack by carefully aligning the workstation's component rails with the rack bracket rail, sliding it in until it catches on the latch. Press the release lever, slide the workstation the rest of the way in, and attach the two thumb screws. Again, use this same procedure for other standard slide rail components like the keyboard tray and switch boxes. To cable the switch box, Attach one CPU to switch cable to each server connected to the switch box. Be certain to label the 9-foot cables for keyboards, monitors, and mouse before running them through the cable channel. Newer keyboards come with built-in trackballs, so mouse cabling is unnecessary for these models. Run the cables through the cable channel to the switch box. Connect the master keyboard, monitor, and mouse cables to the rear of the switch box. Connect the keyboard, monitor, and mouse cables for each server to the appropriate connections that support each server. For example, cable bundle 1 from server 1 would go in connection 1. Rear serviceability components or servers with processor and I.O. cages that slide out are specially designed for service and upgrade from the rear of the unit. The installation into the rack is the same as standard components, except the cable management arm is on the opposite side and has an extra pivot joint. An additional crossover rail is provided to transfer cables from one side of the rack to the other. High density components, such as the ProLiant 850R, fit on a lightweight fixed rail kit that comes with the server. Mark and install the rails using the template. Set the server on the rails. Attach the back of the server to the rail brackets, then secure the front of the server to the rack with the thumb screws located on the bezel. These units must be totally removed from the rack for service or upgrade. To install the monitor, use the template to mark where the shelf will be placed. Measure the front to determine how far down the shelf will be. Measure and mark the back. Install the four cage nuts, then align the shelf with the cage nuts and install the screws. Place the monitor on the shelf. Mark the rack for the bottom panel and surrounding bezel. Install cage nuts where marked. And screw the panels into place. We've demonstrated a few cable configurations, introducing bundling, cable management arms, and the rack cable channels. Without proper planning, cable management becomes messy and difficult to follow. Compaq offers a cable management kit that provides an easy way to organize and route cables. This eliminates confusing bundles when interconnecting several multi-port communications devices. 
The recessed rail kit provides mounting options that recess equipment to allow adequate room for cables that protrude from connection ports in the rack. The cable management kit includes clips that hold up to 40 Category 5 cables. The clips can be attached to the inside of the rack, the face of the mounting rails, or the front of the equipment, either horizontally or vertically depending on your needs. Cable rings are provided to allow routing flexibility and relieve cable tension. They are highly versatile for any cabling requirement and can be installed vertically or horizontally with self-tapping screws mounted on the side and top. Cable access panels help you route cables from the front to the back of the rack or from the back to the front. One panel uses one U of space and the other two U's can be mounted to the front rail fractions or to the full length recessed rails. Network communication devices such as switches and hubs must be recessed to provide space for cables and to allow the front door to close. The recessed rail kit provides rail fractions to install flush mounted equipment. Use the cross braces as reinforcement during installation. Install two of the braces one to two inches below the top rail on both sides. Install the other two braces on the bottom. The rail fractions fit 4U, 7U, 15U, and 28U configurations and are marked L or R to indicate left or right. Plan your configuration with servers and storage components loaded from the bottom up and network related equipment at the top of the rack. Read the instructions that come with the kit as an additional guide. To double the capacity of your system, two 8-port keyboard, monitor, and mouse switch box units can be connected by pairing cables. An interconnect cable kit supplies these cables. To operate two switch box units in a paired configuration, mount one on top of the other and connect them with pairing kit cables. A tiered configuration allows you to connect additional switches to ports on a master switch. These switches can be tiered in master-slave configurations and allow one master switch to switch between computers or other switch systems. Tiering involves linking the slave unit's keyboard, mouse, and monitor connections to one of the computer ports on the master unit. One eight-port master unit can accommodate eight slave switch units in a tiered configuration. In addition to cable management kits, Compaq offers a power distribution unit, or PDU, that manages power distribution and facilitates the consolidation of power cords and cord management within the rack. The PDU distributes AC power input from one or more cords into multiple electric receptacles. The PDU is uniquely designed to mount in the sidewall of a rack, saving use space for more critical servers or options. To complete the installation, blanking panels need to be installed to fill empty space for adequate airflow. Each kit provides four panels for 1U, 2U, 4U, and 8U heights. Place the panel across the front braces of the rack and secure with the Phillips oval head screws and standard cage nuts provided. To reattach the doors, insert the top and bottom pins back into the hinges until they click into place. Make certain the thumb screws on the component faceplates are securely tightened before closing the doors. For information on ordering any additional Compaq products, contact your Compaq authorized reseller. This completes this demonstration of installing various components into Compaq racks. Please read the installation instructions that come with rack components and use the Rack Builder software to assist in the proper installation. Refer to the Compaq Rack Reference Guide for detailed procedures. Please pass this on to other members of your organization that may benefit from this video. Thank you.